Welcome to Butchell Park Baptist Church. We are the body of Christ, an inclusive community of faith rooted in the love of Jesus Christ, growing, serving, and transforming lives. Good morning, church. Psalms 46 says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. Ah, oh, there is a river. The streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be removed. God shall help her in that right early. Hmm. He uttered the voice and the earth melt and the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. I like what verse 8 says. It says, come behold the works of the Lord. He makes wars to cease until the earth and to the end of the earth, he breaks the bow and cutteth the spear and sunder. He burneth the chariot and the fire. Be still and know that I am God. Mm. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. And I think that's why we come to church this morning beloved, to be reminded that even though we face so many challenges and we are definitely in some troubled times, that God is our refuge. Does anybody believe that this morning? Yeah, yeah, we say that, but do we believe it? Yeah, 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 that's the question. Beloved, my name is Kevin Adams, and I am the interim minister of congregational care here at Butchell Park Baptist Church. And we want to extend a warm welcome to you, those who are visiting for the first time, or you may be, uh, you might have already visited us before, but you decided to come back. And we want to say you're always welcome here at Butchell Park. Beloved, today is Sunday and we've come to worship our God. But before we do that, I want to ask you to do me a favor. Would you do me a favor? <laughs> Would you welcome and pass the peace? May the peace of Christ be with you, beloved. Amen. morning. As you see in your bulletin, we're, um, I'll be singing and playing Surely Goodness and Mercy, uh, a good old hymn of faith, and I invite you, if you would like, to sing the chorus along with me. Pilgrim was I and a wandering, in the cold night of sin I did roam. 
When Jesus the kind shepherd found me And now I am on my way home Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me All the days, all the days of my life Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life. He restoreth my soul when I'm weary. He giveth me strength day by day. He leads me beside the still waters. He guards me each step of the way. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life. When I walk through the dark, lonesome valley, my Savior will walk with me there, and safely His great hand will lead me to the mansions he's gone to prepare. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever, and I shall feast at the table spread for me. and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life, all the days, all the days of my life. <laughs> Amen. Oh, excuse me, got choked up. <laughs> Um, we are thankful for people today who are stepping into our music leadership. As you will see, we have um, had to be adaptable this morning. Um, Shelly is on vacation, and Christopher woke up really not feeling well, so thank you for being flexible this morning. Would you join me in our call to worship? God calls us to service rather than honor. God calls us to love the unknown rather than the familiar. We come to this time of worship trusting in the grace of Jesus Christ, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Our hymn of praise this morning is Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. If you'd stand, we're going to sing verses 1 and 3 of that hymn this morning. <laughs> Oh. 
You may be seated. The reading is from Hebrews this morning. This is not the gospel reading. It's the letter from Paul to the Hebrews. Keep on loving each other as brothers. Do not forget to entertain strangers. For by doing so, some people have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those in prison as if you were their fellow prisoners and those who are mistreated as if you yourself were suffering. Marriage should be honored by all and the marriage bed kept pure for God will judge the adulterer and the sexually immoral. Keep your lives free from love of money and be content with what you have because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and for forever. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God the sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that confess his name, and do not forget to do good and to share with others. For such sacrifice, please God. This is the word of the Lord. At this time, our children will be going to godly play. They will be learning the story of the parable of the sower. Today's teachers are Carrie Bearden and Kaylee Rowleader. to spend a few moments in prayer. So I invite you to find a way, find a posture that is prayerful for you. You might put aside something that is distracting for you. Find a way for you to concentrate with your mind and with your body on God's presence in this room. You might choose to close your eyes. You might move your legs or arms or wiggle your back into a more comfortable position, whatever feels good and right to you. Take a slow, deep breath. And do that once more. Loving God, you call us to turn to you in prayer, and so we do. We need you. We have always needed you. We will always need you. And you say, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you, and we trust in that. We begin by praying for all who suffer. May they know the healing power of your presence. And we lift up those names and situations now, either saying them out loud or silently in our hearts. Who needs God's healing and love today? Christopher. 
God of hope, we pray for a world in need of your counsel. We pray that you would guide the nations into paths of justice and peace. God of hope, we pray for your creation as it longs for its redemption. Teach us to walk as faithful stewards. God of hope, we pray for the dying and for those who have died. May they rest in your eternal glory. And God of hope, today we pray for the mission of your church. We pray for the church across the world, Christians gathering to worship you on every continent. Yes, every one. Followers of Jesus sharing your good news in places where it is scarce. Today, God of hope, we will gather to discuss the vision of this particular church, of what you would have us at Butchell Park Baptist Church in Louisville, Kentucky, in this time and place that we have been given. We know that there are challenges. We know that the present does not look like the past and the future does not look like the present. And we hope for so many things. God, take our hopes and transform them into yours. Take our vision and transform it into yours. Show us something better than we could ever imagine on our own. Take this church, Lord Jesus, and mold it into what you would have it to be. Take our hearts, Lord Jesus, and unite them in a forward-thinking mission for your glory alone. Take our hands, Lord Jesus, and put them to work building a future that has you at the center of all that we do. Help us to get out of the way, Lord Jesus. Show us how to make it about you again. Amen. Friends, God invites us to mutual love. But to find that love, we must release our own need for honor, our desire to be raised up. So in humility, let us seek forgiveness, trusting in the promises of God in Christ Jesus. Would you join me in our prayer of confession and forgiveness? Merciful God, forgive us, for we exalt ourselves and mock the humble. We choose to believe we are self-sufficient rather than trust in your strength. Open us to your spirit that we might serve all people without regard to the outcome, devoting ourselves to your honor alone. God rejoices when we repent and return, offering us finest wheat and honey from the rock to sustain us a new life. So rejoice, for you have been reconciled to God and to one another. With joy, seek the honor of God's service. Amen. Our hymn of prayer is hymn 679. We are going to stand and sing the first and the last verse of that hymn. Oh, for a closer walk with God. standing for our offertory prayer. Amen. 
God of grace, we give thanks for your faithfulness to us, for your hope in us. We rejoice in your unending grace, which sustains us in ways we cannot imagine. With the spirit of generosity, we offer ourselves and our gifts. We dedicate these tithes and offerings to carry out your vision for ministry in this place, this community, and beyond. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. weeks we've looked at some pretty difficult scripture haven't we Genesis 18 and 19 weren't exactly lovey-dovey passages but just as a reminder remember how we saw Abraham and Lot and they offered hospitality to Lord the Lord and his angels we watched God offer hospitality to Sarah and to Lot and their families we've also witnessed a devastating lack of hospitality in the city of Sodom Today, though, we turn to Jesus. I know, yay. <laughs> Before we dive in, we're going to start with praying our prayer of illumination together. Would you join me in reading? This is printed in your worship guide. Holy God, your word is a light in darkness and a source of blessing. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us. Enliven our hearts and minds as we hear your word for us today. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Sorry, I flipped my mic on while I was doing that. I would now invite you to actually stand up in body or in spirit. We're going to actually read the gospel reading for today from Luke 14, verses 1 and 7 through 14. So I invite you to stand. One Sabbath, when Jesus went to eat in the house of a prominent Pharisee, he was being carefully watched. When he noticed how the guests picked the places of honor at the table, he told them this parable. When someone invites you to a wedding feast, do not take the place of honor, for a person more distinguished than you may have been invited. 
If so, the host who invited both of you will come and say to you, give this person your seat. Then humiliated, you will have to take the least important place. But when you are invited, take the lowest place so that when your host comes, he will say to you, friends, move up to a better place. Then you will be honored in the presence of all the other guests. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Then Jesus said to his host, When you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends, your brothers or sisters, your relatives, or your rich neighbors. If you do, they may invite you back, and so you will be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed. Although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. This is the word of our Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. You can have a seat. So the rules of etiquette and hospitality have changed somewhat over the years. Let me give you an example. In the Victorian era, did you know it would be rude to ask somebody, how are you doing? Rude. Instead, you had to announce, say it like a sentence, I hope you're doing well. During the reign of the Tudors, you'd be expected to bring your own knife and spoon to dinner. Did anybody bring theirs today for the lunch? No, no spoons. Well, you better hope there's no soup. And in the 1800s, and surely there are other periods too, laughing or smiling around company was, wait for it, frowned upon. Mm -hmm. There are many strange ways of being well-mannered, and in modern times we've had the benefit of the advice of etiquette professionals such as Miss Manners. Miss Manners has been helping people figure out how to be polite since the 1970s. Today's younger generations might turn to Reddit, crowdsourcing their stories and asking A-I-T-A. -A. That stands for am I the... I'll let you guess what the A stands for, and if you really don't know, you can ask me later. <laughs> Generally, I think people want to be polite, though, don't they? They want to be hospitable and welcoming and inviting. We want to understand what's expected of us, and we want to follow the rules. We want our guests to feel prepared for. We want hosts to feel appreciated. And even though the expectations have changed a bit throughout time, in many ways they haven't changed at all. And still, just when people think they have it all figured out, here comes Jesus turning it all upside down again. So the letter begins. Dear Mr. Manners, I was invited to a wedding of a good friend of mine. I should also mention that I'm a very important person in our community. So naturally, I assumed I'd be at the table marked reserved at the front of the room. I sat down and made myself comfortable, but then others began to join me at the table and gave me odd looks. Finally, the wedding planner came over and told me I had to move. She said, give this person your seat. It's reserved for the wedding party. I was absolutely humiliated, and not only that, by that time, the only empty seat was in the back corner of the room. Mr. Manners, was I wrong in assuming that I could sit at the reserve table? How do I avoid this happening again in the future? Signed, Guest of Honor. Dear Guest of Honor, I've seen this kind of thing happen before. Once, when I was on my final journey to Jerusalem, I was eating at the house of a prominent Pharisee. The moment I arrived, I noticed how the guests felt entitled to choose the best seats. But picking the places of honor at a table is a bold assumption. If you're wrong, which it sounds like you were, you may very well find yourself being escorted to the least important place. It sounds like you assumed that you were closer to the bridal party than you were. And without being explicitly told by the host that you were a guest of honor who should sit at the reserved table, you should have chosen an unmarked seat. Don't you remember Proverbs 25? It says, don't put yourself forward in the king's presence or stand in the place of the great. For it is better to be told, come up here, than to be put lower than the presence of a noble. So next time, try this. Take the lowest place. 
Even if you think you deserve to sit in a better seat, even if you're right and you really are a guest of honor, the host will then come and say to you, friend, move up to a better place. And then everybody around you will see you receive honor. Hmm. Dear Mr. Manners, thank you for the good advice you wrote to guest of honor. I've begun trying to choose the humble seat, too, and thankfully, it has helped me avoid any humiliation. Unfortunately, I shared your response with friends of mine, and now I don't have the upper hand. Now we find ourselves competing for the lowest seat so we can appear as humble as possible. Just last week, I found myself almost sitting in the places of honor because everybody was trying to sit at the farthest end of the table to be the most humble. On top of all this, I've got my own dinner party coming up. I want to invite my friends and family and some of my wealthy neighbors too, of course. I'm trying not only to decide who to invite, but if I should just go ahead and assign seats so they don't argue over who's the humblest. Help me, Mr. Manners. How do I keep my social status elevated as both a guest and a host at these events? Signed, the most humblest ever host. Dear the most humblest ever host, first off, I do wish you would stop calling me Mr. Manners. You know that's not my name. Some have made me out to be an example of how to be a good person, but trust me when I say, if that's what you think, you're missing the point. Unfortunately, it sounds like you've taken my advice and twisted it into a political tactic, or you've watered it down into what it means to be a good person. But remember, this shouldn't be about appearing humble, but actually being humble. So that dinner party you have coming up, don't invite your friends, family, and your rich neighbors. They're going to want to pay you back. Instead, host a banquet and invite the people who will never be able to pay you back. You know who I'm talking about. Those people who can't even make priestly offerings. The poor the crippled, the lame, the blind, invite them all over with no strings attached, none whatsoever. Because here's the thing, gentle follower. In God's kingdom, what I have come to proclaim, no one really deserves an invitation, but you were invited anyway. You cannot repay God, and yet God invites you anyway. Let's be honest, you're an unworthy guest. Still, God sits down to dinner with you anyway. So when you sit down to dinner with people who cannot repay you, I hope that you will be reminded of God's grace for you. God's grace for all who wish to be at the table. And you not only get an invitation, but my Father welcomes you to join him in the places of honor, too. Again, not because you did anything to earn it. Not because of the family, or the country, or the skin you were born in. Not because you have money, or status, or fame. But just because he wants you there with him. Remember, gentle follower, as the creator, only God gets to tell you what you're worth. And trust me, it has nothing to do with things like your bank account, your resume, or your appearance. So you can let go of trying to get ahead with me, of climbing to the top. No longer do you need to fight for the best seats. God has sent me to flip all that around. In God's kingdom, all who exalt themselves will be humbled. And all those who truly humble themselves will be exalted. You'll see what I mean soon. I'm on my way, not up, but down. Down to Jerusalem now to show you. I know that you can't fathom what's about to happen, but look at it this way. I'm choosing the lowest seat for you. Dear Mr., I mean, dear Jesus, I guess I hadn't thought about it like that. I still don't fully understand what you mean, all that about going up and going down, but still, thank you for showing me the way. Thank you for giving me permission to rest in your hope. 
Thank you for making Kingdom hospitality possible. For me and for the people around me too. I'll do my best to be humble, really humble. I'll do my best to send out the invitation in the way that you have freely sent it to me. Signed, always a guest of God. Dear, always a guest of God. Now you're getting it. What an elaborate feast God will put at your table as you pull out a chair for both neighbors and strangers. Enjoy the meal. Friends, we have a fresh opportunity each day to see beyond what the world says has value, to peek at God's invitation list. And I've got a spoiler alert. You're on it. Other people are on it, too. And so this isn't about etiquette. What we do here is not about good manners. It's not even about being a good host or a good guest. It's about God's gracious hospitality that we get to follow, welcoming us to the table, to the feast. And we get to be bearers of that good news. So let's have a seat at the table. Let's look around and see who's missing Let's hand out invitations to our neighbors and friends and family, and yes, strangers who have nothing to give in return. Nothing. Inviting them all to the greatest dinner party ever. The feast of God's gracious and everlasting love. Thanks be to God. Amen. Jesus is more than a Mr. Manners. As fun as it is to read letters like that, Jesus is more than a Mr. Nice Guy. Jesus points us directly to God. Jesus shows us what God's kingdom really looks like. And Jesus really does invite us to the table each and every day. If today that invitation looks like a public decision, professing Jesus as Lord of your life or joining this church, you are invited to join me at the front as we stand and sing. And as always, you are welcome to speak with any member of our ministry staff or our church family after worship about making your decision and responding in faith. Let us stand and sing this song of response. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. One, three, and five.
You can remain standing for a few announcements. I know this has been a little bit of a different day. We had some unexpected things come up this morning. I, again, thank you for being flexible. I do have many things I want to make sure that I call attention to, so make sure you look at the announcements in your worship guide. Of course, today we are having our luncheon downstairs in the fellowship hall. Um, all of the kids will meet, but they are meeting in the um, godly play area. And so parents, if you're picking up, um, you can go down there. Or if you're going to the luncheon, we will walk any of the kids down to the fellowship hall. So if you want to go on downstairs and start getting your food, that's fine. But they will not be going up to the third floor today. Um, so we will have the luncheon. This also includes a called business meeting. And we have a lot to discuss. So even if you forgot to sign up, come join us downstairs. Uh, let's see. Next week, okay, we have a couple things important to know. And one of them is not printed. Um, next week, we have a called business meeting. We keep adding on to this called business meeting. It'll be after worship here. We're voting on the vision and goals, which you'll hear about today, extending the current interim budget until we have a senior pastor in place, the concept budget to determine staffing needs, and a thing that is not printed, we are going to vote, hopefully, we should be voting on a custodian a job description as well job description and candidate, yay, <laughs> next week. So we will be voting on all those things at our, at our called business meeting next week. Um, today we have a called business meeting about the gym air conditioning. Um, next week also the youth um, will be going on a field trip to a friend's uh, Baptist church. Uh, this is a church that they met at Passport, so they're having an event and um, we got invited. So they'll be going to that. Parents, uh, you can talk to Carrie or Jackson about that. Um, let's see. Vegetables are being handed out on Wednesdays from 5... 4.45 to 5.30. Um, if you would like to pick those up, they are either in the gym or in the back parking lot. Um, you can look for that. Um, and then a big thank you, of course, to Carla and to Peggy and for, to Jackson, especially Peggy, who got a call at 7.30 this morning and we asked her, can you play the piano? <laughs> thank you so much for filling in on music. Is there anything I missed? There was a lot going on today, so I wanted to make sure I got all the announcements in. Um, look at your announcements. There's quite a few things coming up. Pay attention to those things. We want to make sure everybody is on board and a part of those discussions. Um, I'm going to do the benediction. We invite you to go down to the fellowship hall and go ahead and get food as soon as the hospitality team is ready for that. And we will say a prayer together um, after everybody has been seated. For now, hear this benediction. God graces us with abundance and inspires us to be generous. Now go into the world confident in the Lord's provision, seeking those who are the stranger and providing for those who cannot repay you. And may the God of mercy take you to unexpected places. May the God of humility teach you to serve without pride. May the God of wisdom inspire your work in the kingdom. And the blessing of God, creator, redeemer, and sanctifier be with you now and always. Let us say our mission statement together now as we go. We are an inclusive community of faith rooted in the love of Jesus Christ, growing, serving, and transforming lives. Go in peace, friends. We welcome you, your family, and your friends to participate in the life of our community. Join us in participating in God's mission through service to our neighbors near and far. Come join us for Bible studies on Sundays and Thursdays. Subscribe to our emails and our newsletter mail outs. Get involved in our diverse music ministries. Engage your families in our wonderful children and youth ministries. We want you to be invested. We want you to be connected. Here at Mutual Park Baptist Church, we are an inclusive community of faith rooted in the love of Jesus Christ. Growing, serving, and transforming lives.